Did you know that corn can be grown just about anywhere in Georgia? This week, Rick Trepto reports that anytime corn is the focal point of a winter meeting, you can pretty much guarantee there's going to be record attendance. This was the annual corn short course for South Georgia farmers. The University of Georgia Tipton Campus Conference Center had about 235 growers and related agribusiness representatives in attendance. To me it's important that uh, a grower uh, try and learn as much as he possibly can and, and I like to use this saying in a meeting, become a student. Being a student of corn, a student of crop production, in corn production, is really important. Knowing what the crop needs and being a step ahead of it. In 2012, Randy Dowdy grew cotton, peanuts, and last year about 400 acres of corn. He does no-tillage planting, double-cropping soybeans behind the corn. He applies his chemicals and water through irrigation. Mother Nature help us out. Uh, we had a couple of tropical, tropical storms bring in some rain. Uh, it was a detriment for us, uh, depending on when you planted. When the short course handed out awards, Randy Dowdy received Georgia's High Yield Production Award with 374 bushels per acre. Randy was also the High Yield Production Efficiency Award winner at $2.54 per bushel. For the dry land growers, Richard Weaver of Gordon County was the high producer at 196 bushels per acre. He also won by producing the corn at $2.55 per bushel. Those low costs per bushel were impressive. Market corn prices are averaging $7.20 per bushel. For 2013, the supply for corn is still tight from the drought. Well, we have a much better pricing environment, plus uh, our other commodities such as peanuts and, and cotton are not as good as they have been in, in previous years. Another variable will be the production inputs. The cost of buying seed, fuel, fertilizer, and crop protection chemicals always seem to go up. Particularly chemicals and uh, projected little increase in, in fertilizer and fuel. Uh, seed prices seem to be, you know, fairly uh, stable. Uh, it kind of depends on what variety you're looking at. When you pencil it out, you look at your cost per acre, you look at return on investment, um, you know, it seems right now that corn is penciling out to have the best opportunity as long as you make the yield. So that's very important. Current or possible future corn growers from five counties attended this corn meeting in Tatno County. It was to educate them on the best growing practices. There's going to be a lot of changes with the Midwest situation as was last year. A lot of interest in planting corn, probably some growers that may be interested that haven't grown corn in a while. They also may have to battle diseases from the tropical storms. There will be a lot of interest in double cropping corn, say behind wheat um, here locally, behind onions and uh, maybe some other vegetables. And uh, planting that late offers a new set of obstacles we wanted to try to address in our educational program. With the large corn harvest this year, infrastructure for the growers' trucks not to sit for hours in line at a buying point, and little on farm storage could hang up the process. The Claxton Poultry Company reps were at the meeting. They purchase a lot of the corn in southeast Georgia and wanted to kind of get them here to clarify what percent moisture they can take in, how much they can handle a day. That way uh, we can help prevent some of the bottlenecks um, that could be associated with a a large corn crop. The universal message for the corn growers this year, don't let the corn stress, not even one day from a drought, disease, or insects. In Tifton, I'm Rick Trepto for the Georgia Farm Monitor.